end zone be done. What's up, WWE Champions Universe? This is Lee and Rusty from Champions Chat. We are on the main official Champs channel uh, with about 60 of our very best friends covering for Professor tonight. And one thing that we do on our Friday streams is we power rate superstars. Rusty, what is the difference between a tier list and a power rating? What, what, you invented the system. Tell me why oh. it's different. Well, a tier list, uh, yeah, a tier list tells you um, it, by a matter of preference uh, yeah. how you would rate, how you would rank um, superstars of the same class, maybe one to ten, right? How do you rank it? Now, it, it, a tier list never considered, and re the reason they went basically obsolete was because of the level of nuance involved with the game at this point where it's straps and plates and ultimate plates and gear and moments. And it, it's just, it, it's way too complicated to factor that in. So we said, well, what if we were able to assign some categories of damage or, or preparedness, readiness for battle? What if we could like break down these superstars and give them grades Kind of like the way you would have all seen your old baseball cards, right? You know, your batting yeah. average, your RBIs. Like, I grew up as a baseball card kid, right? <laughs> so, Lee, and Lee said uh, X-Men trading cards had a similar yeah. concept. Well, that's um, that's where I uh, – that's where – when you first – so, okay, quick story time or whatever. You called me. I was at the park with my kids, and you said something along the lines of Lee – Three minute move sets brought us to the table, right? That's what we consider w what probably made us official CCs is having that idea. Yeah. I have something, you said this to me, I have something that is on that level. And you started to outline this basic idea of power ratings that we kind of refined that, you know, BDC poured into, 2Bob poured into, we had a few other people kind of connect with us. And what I said was, yeah, when I was collecting X-Men cards, because I did do some baseball cards, but I, I wasn't a sports guy. I liked the Marvel cards. If you flipped them over on the back of them, they had different categories like power and speed and intelligence and energy production. And then it would give a number and like a beam or a, you know, like a, a visual graphic of like how far down the path these went. And so you look at someone like Wolverine, who is my favorite superhero, maybe tied with Superman, but pretty much right up there of all time. Wolverine wins in fights all the time, but he's not the fastest. He's not the smartest. He, he doesn't have energy projection and he can't fly, right? And so right. if you look at that in a superstar, you mentioned Relentless KO. If you look at the tier list, Relentless KO is still near the top of your powerhouse ratings. But what it doesn't tell you is how much do you need to get him started? How fast is he? Is right. he turn one in feud? What is he, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the power ratings are a way to look at things and look at objective metrics. So, mm -hmm. Rusty, what do you got from there? Or do you want to take a look at our objective metrics for a second? Yeah. Since this is no, a what is the them, video. Let's show them the categories because we've done some, I guess, you know, some theoretical um, talk and we've explained generally what they are. Um, the first category um, and Lee will help you see it, but it's power. Yeah, I'm going to try and pull it up here at a little bit higher. There we go. So we say power, right? And that's basically their their either move or gym damage threshold. And yet we're not looking for a key number like 20 million, 30 million to say that's their power. We want to know, are they meta relevant? Right. right, Lee. How do we word um, that the power on the top of the chart? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to fit this on the screen here again, real quick. Uh -huh. um, okay, so so for power, <clears throat> what we say is to be meta relevant, you would have 
uh, a five point scale uh, with the five points being 100% or more of the current meta's top end damage. For six star gold, we've said that's 60 million damage. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people who can hit a lot higher than that, but that's the, the threshold. 60 million or more gets you five points. 40, I'm sorry, for four points, it's 80% of the current meta's top end damage or higher. So 80 to 100% of that damage. For three points, it's 60 uh, to 80% of that damage. And for two points, it's 40 to 60%. So all we have to do is say, do they hit 60 million? If they do, five points. If not, what percentage of that do they do? And that's just one of the metrics that we look at then. Because your next one that you added was speed. Tell us about that. Uh, well, and yeah, why do we say 60 million, Lee? Because that's basically what's required to TKO someone in feud, right? To keep, keep yeah, them from earn a lot of them. modes. Not well, boss, max but other ones, yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one is speed. Now, speed takes several factors into account, one of which is do they have a low enough MP charge to where I can get them started on turn one in a feud, right? Which is a lot of times that's kind of the gold standard from evaluation. But we wanted to take it a step further. We didn't just want to know about low MP. We also wanted to know about speed of match and um, uh, ability to recycle right. should you need a turn two. or So basically, how fast to get the mechanism running at, right. at max potential, right? Did I say that well enough? Yeah, yeah, because uh, so um, we did have two of the top feuders in the game, two Bob right. and BDC, speak into this. So it does lean a little bit heavier towards feud, but the argument is if you can win in feud quickly, you can pretty much win in any other mode, aside from maybe boss battle, but that has its own characteristics. But so for speed, like for example, in the five-point category, two of the following need to be true. Their MP charge needs to be equal or lesser to, than six MP, uh, which your top end characters are right in that six, maybe seven, but right around that six MP range. The moves need to recycle flawlessly um, because, you know, if they can't do uh, a recycle, like William Regal in Boss Battle is going to be one of the examples I'm going to go back to a number of times. He does enough damage that you can just keep going, but he doesn't recycle at all with the move set most people use, right? And then are the animations quick? This one was my clubber category when we, or I'm sorry, not clubber, Apollo. When we started talking about this, I used Apollo in a boss battle and he did amazing because of the requirements for that specific boss battle. But his move animations literally took 45 seconds at one speed. So you barely got your moves in or you couldn't do them at all turn one. You know, and again, mm -hmm. in feud, the longer your move uh, animation is, the longer it takes you to win in feud, et cetera, et cetera. So can you win a feud in under 45 seconds with this person, so to speak? Uh, so, yeah, so that was that was that one. A great example of somebody who has a combination of speed and power would be Triple H Rex Regum. Rex oh, yeah. Regum just has this three click you know Merrick always calls them right a right. couple of clicks they don't touch the board there's no picky choosy move recycles right. perfectly knocks out the opponent uh, you know an example of like a slow would Regal be considered slow or who's a slow guy in terms of well i mean there's a number of them but like i say let's just go back to our, our uh, apollo you know like you you uh, i know he's a rare one but it gives a good example you have to touch so many different parts of the board to get yeah, his moves going you have to choose where they're going you have to yeah, you know click this thing click that thing or uh done in about five minutes okay we can be done oh, sorry I, th I thought i was muted i'm so sorry <laughs> i was saying good night to not. my daughter I was saying goodnight to my daughter. So. It's okay. My daughter came on the stream earlier too. So, uh, Or like a, a JD Finn Balor, right? You have to click so many different places. You have to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really choosy. Ozzy, yeah, Ozzy would not be uh, fast, although he is super cool in terms of those uh, that side of things. You have to choose some things. But either way, yeah. So your next category then is versatility. I'm sorry, readiness. Uh, readiness is all about what does the character need to get started? Because this is the one that cinched it for me 
as to what's the difference between a tier list and a power rating. Uh, you can have an amazing character, but you need so many things to get them to their top end uh, damage or even relevant damage that it doesn't matter. Like unless you have a plate and a gear and a moment and a rare trainer and a, you know, all this. And so for me, like if I'm a, a, a free to play player, I'm not, but if I still were, you know, I'm going to look at the readiness category and go, how much do I need to make them good? How much do I need to make them relevant? Because if I right. pulled William Regal randomly, but didn't have a Piper plate, didn't have gear, didn't have, you know, Maxine as the trainer, didn't have, well, what good does he do me? It's like having this like right. super rare character on my roster, but I can't run him. So readiness is huge for me. Uh, Rusty, the next one then is is one of the ones that you like to to talk about in there. Not just readiness, but also versatility. Are they good? Yeah, versatility is – we probably say different ways. Um, this We describe this feature of a superstar, but like – so like one of my favorite – everybody who's ever watched our stuff, they know I love acro dumb. Defendido <laughs> la familia, right? So like I love Acro Dom. Yeah. But he's no longer if he ever was relevant right. in feud. He's just right. not. But he's so fun on a tour. He's I'll take him into a showdown every once in a while. Like I don't mind. Um but you know what? He's not he's not the guy you want in every scenario. Right. Right? So that's why we started saying it's like, well, what what are, you know, let's say zombie Damien Priest, another great example. Of, yep. um, he You might want to take him into gym mania. You might want to take him into boss battle. He might be able to do some rare and unique things, yeah. but his feud days are over, regardless right. of how high you've brought him. So. Right. Well, and then the last one, which I think is a key differentiator, and it oftentimes is the difference between a character getting a certain score or, or the next one, is your entourage ability. So talk about that for a moment, Rusty, and then I'm going to talk about where William Regal fits and we'll close out the stream. So the reason entourage ability matters so much is because, right, how many people in our faction right you know they they post a, f a photo of somebody they pull and they say any good is right any good now usually the first response is well he's awesome as a green gym coach or right. you know for, as a trainer yes so like like Ta tangaloa uh, or um someone of that nature right free Zombie chelsea it's probably not who you want to be going into battle with and yet that entourage ability, whoa, right? right. Uh, you know, all of the 12K gym damage trainers, coaches. Right. Um, and so there are, Zombie Gunther is a great example. He has yeah. the evergreen entourage ability that makes right. him valuable for the rest of this game's existence. Um, likely. Sherry or Matt Hardy or Mimrock, a person that's a multiply gem enhancer is going to be an evergreen character of extreme value. Right. So how can you say they stink if they're <laughs> right? So like that's where it's not fair to well, okay, this you know this free Tongaloa, you know, but like you're like whoa, but hang on, look what he can do to right. the rest of your roster. Look how right. good they can be in the entourage, right? So so it, I think you need a separate metric for evaluating because what we're trying to find out is the worth of a superstar. Are they a right. dud or are they someone that you, or is worth bringing up? Right. Every single – here's out of the last thing I'll say about this. Every single zombie this month – this is October 2024. Every <laughs> single zombie. I don't even care. I don't even care how they are as a fighter. I don't care. Right. Because their entourage ability makes them all extremely desirable yep. for the next few years. You're going to be wanting all six of them. Um, Absolutely. So, so, so yeah, that's where you're just like, 
oh man, remember back when Zombie Gunther was good? Well, maybe <laughs> maybe as a feuder, like right. I know he's still good on my roster for a, for the rest of my days. Because right, but if you years. look at a tier list, Zombie Gunther's going to be like, oh, you don't need him. He's not any good or, or you know, whatever. But yeah, 100%. That, that's good. So let me look at a couple things here real quick. First of all, I want to say a big shout out to J.D. Nash uh, for creating the ranking summary sheet, which is this version of the sheet right here that has everybody sortable by their versatility, by their, ooh, you got some clanging dishes going on. Some power, some speed, entourage abilities. You can sort it out by that. You can see right here if you want to sort it, do that. JD Nash, huge shout out there. But then you can also just go into the visual version of it right here. And so you could take a look at like Cody Rhodes, Bionic Redneck, Final Testament, uh, Rezar. You could see, okay, all of them are a five in power, but Austin's only a three in entourage. So he's maybe not going to be the most important entourage me member. And if I'm looking at the three of these, I'm going to go, well, obviously Cody and Austin are the better of the two, but Razar is a vital entourage member right there. So you've got some, some things to kind of consider that. So I want to take a look real quick and then Rusty, I know you've got to, you got to go, I got to go, but a good example would be William Regal. This is why I think the tier list versus power ratings discussion is so important and why this concept is a huge winner. William Regal, if you just look at a tier list, he is forever going to be the top of the showboat pile. He hits for 500 million without even trying if you've got some tricks. But let's say I got William Regal on a lucky pull and I'm a free to play player and everybody's telling me he's the best out there and the right, but I don't have a gear. I don't have Maxine. I don't have the Piper plate. All of a sudden, he's not super great on my roster. So while he's going to be a five on damage, in fact, he's a 55,000 on damage, uh, he breaks the scale. If you don't have a few things he's not going to work on your roster. So when you start looking at the readiness category, what does William Regal need? Well, he at least needs a Piper plate. He needs Maxine or now Tama Tonga, fair enough, uh, to fit in there. If you're going to start him loaded turn one, he kind of needs gear. Uh, he doesn't necessarily, but you have to have at least Tama, Tama Tonga and double MP trainers if not. So now you're talking three to four special things that he needs, which on our readiness scale means that he's actually not as ready. Uh, he doesn't reload and he's not as quick. So our speed metric might not be a five for William Regal. I would maybe consider him as a four in speed. So he's a five in power, he's a four in speed, and he's a three in readiness, but he's still the best showboat in the game, right? It just is a little more nuanced. And his trainer ability, his trainer ability is a four, right? I'm just going off the top of my head. We're not actually power rating him right now. Uh, you know, his trainer ability is a four. Versatility, if you have his gear, at least one of them, he'll win in showdown, boss, and feud all day. So his versatility is super high. But you might look at that and go, okay, well, let's say he's an overall of a... 22 or a 23 and we go into the power rating sheet here and you go well that's no different than rex regum that's no different than seth freaking rollins but vader's better than him well vader doesn't hit as hard as william regal but he does have a readiness score that's going to be higher he has a speed score that's going to be higher. So if we were to power weight rate William Regal and he was a 22 and he falls be behind all of these guys, you're going to go, well, wait a second. I thought he was the best showboat in the game. Kind of, but it depends on what you have. So the power ratings give a nuance to that that you just don't get in a general tier list. So general tier list, uh, Rusty, I know we got to go. That's kind of my thoughts close us out and we'll end the stream and this video. I think, I think my final thought would be this um, people that have, uh, if you've watched the Merricks 
uh, gym damage video, or if you haven't, you need to go watch it. People that have multiply gems, people that have damage um, boosts, they're gonna they're gonna remain meta relevant for a long time to come. People that right. don't uh, are gonna their power rating will ultimately suffer. People right. that have a very high entourage ability will stay valuable for a very very long time and people that that don't um will not and so so yeah it's 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 gonna be fun to watch as metas come and go this system where we may have to kick down someone's score uh anyway Mm -hmm. but we do it every friday night this is what we want you to do join us on the champions main twitch each and every friday night as we look at the new superstars as they come out uh, and we help answer the question, right? Are they any good? And we give you data on why. And the whole chat gets to vote. We put up polls. You get to vote, cast your vote on what you think uh, it should be. And so you have a voice in this. So this isn't just our rankings. This is a ranking for the whole community. And we'd love for you to be a part of it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.